Wow, Tara's new place looks like her old place. I haven't moved yet. She hasn't moved yet. Uh, plans changed a little bit. I'm going to be moving. I will be in a new location with a different kitty starting in March. So we have three more weeks of Pretty Miss Bridget here, and then I'll be moving away. Aww. And you can all meet Miracle. Who will be the new kitty in my life. New oh, cat, yes. <gasps> Did you see it? Yes, we saw. That was a good jump. That was a good jump, Bridget. Uh, we will have replacement <laughs> kitty. <laughs> this is bling bling. Sometimes she gets scared of the ribbon. Uh. <laughs> this is the whole bit tonight, kids. We're just going to be talking about the cat. There she is. Yeah, this is... So I'm glad you were here tonight, even though I'm... The, 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 the comment section on last week's video has dubbed Dan Replacement Bridget. I don't think Dan's ever going to do that. <laughs> when he was in the background of last week's video, so they've dubbed him Replacement Bridget. Uh, I don't think I'm ever going to get him to jump in the air for a piece of money. Are you sure? Have you tried? I'm pretty sure. Be like, have the rib come on, Dan, come on. Like, no. He'll just be like, no, no. fuck you. No. Uh, Hi, baby. Hello. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? She tried to eat my cannoli before. So I'm glad you showed up tonight, even though last night I was... Duh. Yes, you were, like, dying and stuff, I heard. I wasn't dying. I was just sick as a motherfucker. I don't know if you can hear my voice right now. I'm still a little... <sighs> You're a little verklempt. Verklempt, that's the word, yeah. I've dropped, a, I've dropped like a quarter of an octave, I can tell. It's a thing. I've got like, I've got, I've got my Batman voice. Batman. I'm Dean on Supernatural. Sammy! 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 So, we've got uh, some, we actually have... Uh, We've got some not so joyous things, but the very first one tonight is a joyous event. And I'm very happy we get stories like this because it's it's one of those confluences of of nonsense that just make me proud to be an American. And, you know, not just in a Super Bowl way. Oh. Let's get the intro going. Each week cast from the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And there is no way to label this first story uh, except for joyous chaos. And I'll stress, no one was hurt. No, no one was 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 hurt in this, this story, which is makes it even better. Because if it was hurt, someone's hurt, I'd be like, oh, I can't use it, but I can because, and that that makes this amazing. Comes to us from San Francisco. One of the best headlines of the year already. Truck carrying frozen chickens, bees collide in fiery crash. What? I know! Oh my. Oh my, yeah. Well, God damn it. Firefox is being a bitch. Stop being a bitch. Stop it. Be good. Stay good, Firefox. Stay good. Um. Well, that explains it. It's near Coachella. <laughs> this is just the food tent. <laughs> a big rig hauling frozen chicken collided with a truck carrying bees in Southern California, igniting a fireball that quickly cook the chicken. California Highway Patrol says the crash on Interstate 10 near Palm Springs occurred after 7 a.m. Monday. The truck and the chickens burst into flame and was incinerated, but the driver escaped with minor injuries. The driver hauling the bees was not hurt, although Highway Patrol officers at the scene reported bees buzzing everywhere. Photos, meanwhile, showed chunks of blackened highway roasted chicken. A beekeeper was summoned! I love that line. That is the best line of this of this the story. I um, think I saw blackened highway roasted chicken on the menu at KFC <laughs> with fresh honey. And you could get it in a double down, double down highway black blackened. 
They're selling now a hot dog where instead of a bun, it has a folded I piece know. of right? chicken. I know. Why would you do that? And that sounds really, really yes. gross. Uh, I just, I love the line, a beekeeper was summoned. <laughs> like there was one of the, the highway patrollers out there. Summon the beekeeper! Summon the beekeeper! Summon the and, beekeeper! And they drew a giant... <laughs> on the floor, on the ground and did the chant which was zzz, <laughs> and the beekeeper <laughs> just sometimes reality will do something so gloriously stupid <laughs> and be this is this is beautiful i love this How can you not adore that this happened? If you are on the highway with your kid in the traffic, does that count as teaching them about the birds and the bees? Well, you see, son, when you drive a truck full of bees to a truck full of birds, they fucking explode. Wear a condom. That is that this this is like a fucking video game happened here, you know? Yeah, this is some Grand Theft Auto shit. Yeah. Was, like random. It's like somebody got the the oh, achievement for this shit. The beekeeper was summoned. The beekeeper was summoned. That sounds like the worst superhero ever. There oh. was the beekeeper. Oh god, now you're making me have to I have to look this shit up. Oh god. There was a mass called the beekeeper, that'd be amazing. There's a Tori Amos album called The Beekeeper. It's her weakest album. Um yeah, uh I, I will show you this. Cause you won't believe me otherwise. You're mentioning I'm thinking of the beekeeper, and the first thing that popped into my brain was this. Ladies and gentlemen, they summoned this guy. Buzz Is off. That a That's a He-Man character. Buzz off. The beekeeper. He is a humanoid bee and comes from a race of bee people raised in the Mystic Mountains. That's who they summoned. Buzz Ta off. Originally tagged by Mattel as heroic spy in the sky. The beekeeper! Okay. Okay, so that was the joyous bit. It gets a little downhill from here. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow has oh, a... Oh, <laughs> I love that. I just got the name out of my mouth. You're like, oh, that's shit. Just, that's just never a good start to a sentence. Gwyneth Paltrow has a website. Yes, she does. It's oh, called... Oh my God. Are we going to do the vagina thing? Yes. Yes. The website is called Goop. Goop. Why is it called Goop? I think it has something to do with her initials, but it cracks me up because when I was a kid, we had a little etiquette book. It was, I don't know if you had this book. It was a storybook about the Goops. And the Not. Goops have all the worst manners in the world. The Goops slurp their soup and blah, 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 blah. It was like little rhymes about the Goops and they have the worst manners and it was supposed to teach you about manners. I think this was like a book from the 50s that my mom just kept. So every time I read about goop, I think of the goops slurping their soup. Yeah, you know what else the goops apparently do? They steam clean their vagina. They steam their vagina! I'm not kidding! With some kind of poison. This article from the Daily Beast begins, Women of America, please do not steam your vaginas. But, you know, they don't come with that little care tag like your clothes do. Like... No, we they don't. Little tag that flaps out of our vulva and tells us not to like do not iron. Wash with warm water in delicates. The Oscar winner and lifestyle maven has been touting the benefits of vaginal steam treatments on her Goop website. Go to destination for forty dollars underpants and tastefully mystical bromides. In singing the praises of holistic spa Tekken, 
Paltrow enjoins her readers to get the mugwort v steam. Quote, you sit on essentially a mini throne, she writes, and a combination of infrared and mugwort steam cleans your uterus et al. It is an energetic release, not just a steam deuce, that balances hormone levels. If you're in LA, you have to do it. No, no, you Here's don't. If this were necessary for the continued function of your uterus and vagina, mm -hmm. we would have that mechanism in our in place. Or we would have died out a long time ago. Yeah, you absolutely. And there are doctors that are saying like mugwort is actually kind of bad for you. But if it were necessary to... Oh, hi. We came back. Hmm. If it were necessary to shoot steam, which also sounds really painful. I know! Into your vagina. I'm thinking about steaming my urethra, and that just that idea just makes me kind of squirm a bit. And infrared. I'm pretty what? sure. Why do we need I'm lasers? I'm pretty sure the parts of me that have never even seen the outside <laughs> world do not need an infrared treatment. But Gwyneth Paltrow wants to shoot lasers at your lady parts. Why does Gwyneth Paltrow want to shoot lasers at your lady parts? You know, I think I think famous people just honestly run out of shit to spend their money on. I think she'd been spending too much time with Tony Stark. And so fucking charlatans come along and convince them they need these things. You know what you really need? Like, Craig Ferguson does a whole bit in his stand-up routine about how he went once to get his aura massaged. And he paid money for somebody to, like give him a massage three feet away from his person to massage his aura and just like charlatans find people with too much money and convince them that they need this shit you do not need to shoot steam into your vagina no if, if you did that would have come up a long time before now i just it i just and she's like it's good for your energy you, you, you want to change your energy do yoga Change your diet, exercise, eat some green shit now and again. Yeah. Don't shoot steam in your hoo-ha! You know what's actually proven to be really good for your urinary tract? Cranberry. Cranberry juice. Cranberry juice. juice. Not cranberry juice cocktail, cranberry juice. Right, cranberry juice. a lot of cranberry juice. There you go. If you have any pain down there, go see a doctor. Don't get your iron out the closet. You do... Your pussy does not need a power cleanse. <laughs> You do not have to power wash your vagina. <sighs> yes. Hello. I know. If you oh, say you that as you're playing with the cat. You don't need a power wash. Do no. You? no. No. No, you don't. You can't hurt uh, her purring right now. Okay, so. I'm going to need to use my mouse. I need this on back. No, you don't. She's got to look at her face like, no, you don't. No, you don't. Do it every day. Do it every day. Sure. So, there are issues with, with, like, actual sports. And someone can debate about how much issues these are. But in sports like the Olympics and whatnot, transgender's kind of tricky. Because we have men's sports and women's sports. And they have, they're, they're, they have rules about transgendered women. Yeah playing, you know, in women's sports and stuff like that. Which, you can debate that a lot, but the the logic, the sp thin, sparse thread of logic that there is, is that it would give a disadvantage to other females playing to have a transgendered woman playing in the Olympics. You, we, you could argue that day and night. Where that doesn't apply is to the so-called e-sports. Which is what makes this, that, that's what makes this next story so kind of confusing. And again, it makes me sad that I have to get my stories from Ars Technica because the crazy is bleeding into my science. League of Legends eSport organizer limits lesbian and transgender participants. I also want to stress this is not the official League of Legends maker, Riot. This is just one of their uh, league partners. 
Okay. This is for a video game. Yes. Official Asian League of Lim League of Legends partner claims unfair advantages for gay and trans women. How does that help you in a video game? On Tuesday, a Southeast Asian esports organizer deemed an official League of Legends partner by the Massive Games creator posted a first-of-its-kind restriction about how many gay and transgender players could participate in the company's all-feminine tournament for the online game. In a post that opened with greetings, ladies of the league, an unnamed site moderator at Garena uh, explained the company planned to, quote, experiment with participation rules for its February 22nd League of Legends tournament known as the Iron Solari. The new rule will limit each five-person League, uh, League of Legends team to having a maximum of one gay slash transgendered woman for the entirety of the tournament day. The rules clarify the team cannot go so far as to swap a gay or transgendered player for another between matches. Okay. But the I think the idea here, which is incredibly offensive, is that a transgendered woman having transitioned from male is inherently better at video games than other women because she used to be male. Is there a video game controller that I don't know about that you need a dick for? But, but to make this... Like, is there a Fleshlight video game now? But to make this even, e even more confusing, this includes gay players being lesbians, being never having been men in the first place, I don't understand how any of that affects your ability to play a video game. No! I'm, I'm, I'm lost on... Um... No! I just... It... I just... I just... You're doing this, right? Yeah. Oh, someone points out, yes, Tara, there is a joystick you can use with your dick, but that's not relevant right now. Really? <laughs> Um, we I know there's now know an official iPad hookup for your fleshlight so that you can actually fuck your porn. You could probably adapt that to do other things with it, sadly. I just... This is such a, a, a cavalcade of ignorance that it hurts me to be on the same planet. This is, like... Like, Gamergate wishes, Gamergate aspires to this level of dickery. <laughs> and and they have posters of this on their walls. Like, someday, someday we can be dicks that big. And the, the, the official company is like, no, LGBT players are welcome at our tourneys. We're working with partners to ensure consistency with our values across all regions. Translation, we will slap somebody. Does the all-male tournament have, like, a minimum of gay dudes? Yeah, I know, right? Can, oh, you got too many gay dudes. Is there, like, a handicap for gay dudes? Because they're obviously worse at video games because they're gay. You can only have one gay dude on your team. No, you have to have at least one. Oh, well. That's, because they're that's... gay dudes. Ah, uh, so, yeah. You know. This is some bullshit. And... Um, I don't even play video games. I don't really give a fuck about video games. But... I gotta say, at least Riot stepped in to go, whoa, 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 shut the fuck up. Yeah, that's a solid question. What? <laughs> what do they do with the bi girls? Does that count as half? I guess they have to tag in. <laughs> Can you have two bi girls on your team as long as they don't play at the same time? And here's the other thing. Do they go around and ask everyone their sexual orientation before gameplay begins? How fucked up is that? Hi, you're here to play a video game. Who do you fuck? I don't understand how that's relevant. That's incredibly offensive. I don't see how that's party. 
that's not a party. Spit. Well, we do have kind of a party as our next story, and oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. I was in the Cub Scouts. Remember and when video games were fun? Remember when it was just about trying to shoot some fucking ducks and not have an obnoxious dog laugh at you? Yes, they still are. Do you know what I do? I stay the fuck off Twitter. Games are a OK fun. But why isn't it just fun stuff to fuck around with anymore? Like, why does everybody take video games so goddamn seriously? There is. Stuff? I have, like, RimWorld. It's, that is just fun stuff. When video fuck games with. were new, you tried to shoot the Maya? ducks, and then the dog laughed at you, you tried to shoot the dog, but you couldn't, which was wrong, in my opinion. You should have been able to shoot that fucking dog. But it was fun, and anybody can do it. And it didn't really fucking matter. Now everybody takes it so goddamn seriously, it's not even fun anymore. I just, I just play my video game. This is why I only play Rock Band, man. And Words with Friends. So, I was in the Cub Scouts when I was little. I was in Cub Scouts, and I was in Weeblos, and I was in the Boy Scouts. And here's where I get my little off, the, uh, my little diversion story here. You um, shouldn't say this is where you get off and talk yeah, about the Cub Scouts. Funny. I was in the Boy Scouts, and we went on camp out. And a couple of the boys thought it'd be funny to twist tie the zipper on my tent shut and then in the middle of the night bang on the tent really loud and scare me and make me try to run out my tent. I didn't like that. No. So the next night I got a bunch of pine straw and I made a really big circle around their tent and then I pulled a line of it back to the fire No, it was a rat. There was like a, uh, there was a good law. It was like a huge circle. But from inside the tent, it would look like everything was on flames. This is another time when we need to talk about proportionate response. <laughs> they didn't fuck with me again. <laughs> no, no, I imagine not. Anyway, I mentioned that because our next story is about Cub Scouts who had kind of an interesting experience my nephew wanted me to go on his boy scout camp out and now i'm suddenly really glad i didn't hi you know the last couple of weeks you've been like fuck you i don't want to be on the internet and now you're like hey uh this comes to us from uh i believe this is yes yeah, san diego parents outraged at cub scouts trip to black's beach now it's not they don't mean African American beach. They, that's the name of the place. It's Black's Beach. That's not what they're outraged about. Hiking and scouting go hand in hand, but apparently the scenery one group of Cub Scouts came across during a recent hike was a little too revealing. Some local parents are upset. The outing including a walk through Black's Beach. It's supposed to be a nature hike through the Torrey Pine State Park. Uh Diane Levkin and her husband Eric snapped a photo just before the hike got started. They say their fourth grade son. About a half dozen other kids were exposed to far too much. Dozens and dozens of nude people at Black's Beach. Couples say they couldn't believe the pack master of Troop 766, Desmond Wheatley, had led them on a trail through the area, which is known as a nude beach. Well. On the one hand... This was probably ill-advised. Yes! yes! On the other hand, I really feel like we are far too fucking uptight about nudity in this country. Like, you're happy to let your kids watch, I don't even know a good example, fucking Jason Bourne, murder face, 30 people. That's cool. But holy shit, if there's a boo. We are way too uptight about wait, sex and nudity wait, in this country. There's a quote. Violence. Awesome. There's you a quote in this awesome. article. You've got to hear this quote. Um, this is Diane Levkin, one of the parents. Quote, I was nauseated because I've never seen just a bunch of nude people walking around holding hands, strange people that I don't know. She was nauseated. Like I get if everybody was fucking on that beach because maybe your kids don't need to see that but and it, this is probably an ill-advised trip for the cub scout troop i'm not saying it's not i'm just saying we're way too puritanical 
Like, you're nauseated and outraged because your kid saw some dicks. You know what? <laughs> your kid has a dick. He's, He's a boy. Seen... He's a Cub Scout. He's got a dick. He's seen one. He uses it to go pee. He's going to be using it for a lot more than that before you know it. But to be fair, all right, this troop leader, it's known this is a nude beach. And he I just. Mean, it's not. If I was Cub Scout leader, I probably wouldn't plan a trip to the nude beach. Let's see where we're going today. We're going through the forest. We'll see maybe some uh, some birds and we'll get, you know, some we'll bird see calls. Some yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Ow. <laughs> Ow, still sick. Ow. So much for the planning ahead merit badge. Uh. But yeah, it'd be like, well, let's see. There's the nature trail through the woods, and then there's, you know, the Lano dicks, and then, uh, ooh, we'll go spot some ducks later on. I mean, technically, that is part of a nature trail. Yeah. Technically, that is as God created us. Yeah. We've got some more naked and crazy and fuck sakes. More new drugs. Son of a bitch. I want to stress out, nobody got hurt in this one. Thank fucking God. <sighs> naked Lake Worth Sniper says he was high on Flaka. Quote, someone please call my sister, Leroy Struthers yelled out as he stood naked and armed on a building rooftop last Friday. I feel delusional and I'm hallucinating. Struthers was sparted naked and armed with a handgun on an apartment building rooftop. At one point, he alleged to threaten to harm himself and anyone else if he was approached. When interviewed by police following his arrest, Struthers, age 33, said he was depressed and claimed to be under the influence of a new designer street drug called Flaka. That's a character on Orange is the New Black. Really? Yeah. Now this She's is what... Latina chicks. She's the Latina goth chick who really likes the Smiths. This is what pisses me off here. Flaka is... Yeah, uh, he... Flaca, a synthetic form of marijuana, is vaped with an e-cigarette. God damn it! You've got to ruin it! This is why we can't have nice things. What does that have to do with bath salts? Flaca is made with ingredients used to make bath salts, the recreational designer drug that made headlines recently and is linked to dangerous hallucinations and may be even responsible for the face-seeing incident in Miami, though that's still being debated. It's a hodgepodge mix of, ke mix of chemicals, sort of a cross between crack cocaine and meth. I don't know about you, but I'm not someone who wants to smoke a hodgepodge. No. That doesn't sound like a good time. No. Why? I do sort of object to them calling this guy a sniper when he had a handgun. Yeah. But why? Why would you? This does not. This doesn't sound like a party to me. I don't see how that's a party. <laughs> this, this, this is like, hey, you want to smoke a misdemeanor? Or a felony in this case. You want to know what dementia feels like? No. No. No, I don't. It's not like, you know, I got the weekend off. I want to kick back and relax. How about you give me something that makes me lose my fucking mind, end up naked on top of a building with a gun? That's how I want to spend my weekend. I mean, I guess at least he had the presence of mind to know that he was hallucinating. And that's the weird thing, I guess. Like, You know this shit's fucked up if you could actually go, yep, I'm hallucinating, all right. Because, you know what? God's talking to me, and the last time I checked, he wasn't Mickey Mouse. Why do we do these things? I myself? don't know! 
someone I was at a pizza place I used to go to a lot tonight and I was just hanging out there and one of the guys there was talking about how if you huff cat urine you'll get high and I'm like why do you know that and why would you do that like who walks up to the litter box and goes let me snort what's in here Because I'm here to tell you, I've had cats my whole life. The litter box is not a place you want to be sniffing, let alone snorting. But he's like, yeah, I know. You, you, you got to huff cat urine. And I'm like, no. Just get drunk. Yes! That is, yeah. Booze is the easiest drug to make on the fucking planet. If you can't buy some... Find you some oranges or some apples, squeeze that shit into a jug, let it ferment, you're done! I mean, the shittiest beer in the world is still going to be better than snorting cat urine. Let's, I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know there. Pap Papsley Ribbon? Really? That's a toss-up for me. Dan actually likes Paps Blue Ribbon, but he's a hillbilly. He can't help it. Mm. Paps Blue Ribbon, ribbon or cat urine? How old's the cat urine? <laughs> I think it has yeah. to be pretty fresh. Yeah. Uh, and our last one tonight. People taking shit way too far. We've had the ones where, remember the kid was suspended for pointing his finger and going, bang. Remember that? Yeah. Because that, that's a gun. That This could be mistaken for a gun. Have you ever seen a gun that looks like this? Totally. That that'd be amazing if Smith and Wesson started making the finger, you know. Ow. But let we, this one takes it a little step further, and geeks get ready to be a little outraged here. I know I was. Boy suspended for making magic terroristic threat with Hobbit ring. Yeah. Texas father's outrage after his fourth grade son was suspended for school for making a, quote, terroristic threat with a magic ring. I do want to point out that that spelling of the name Aiden is bullshit. It's A-I-D-A-N. And this whole new thing of just spelling names the stupidest way possible kind of makes me crazy. His nine-year-old son Aiden then brought a, quote, magic ring to his class at Kermit Elementary School telling another boy in a playful way that his ring could make him disappear. But school officials interpreted that as a threat and removed Aiden from the class. That's actually how supervillains are made. Are you telling me that a grown-ass adult... Ew. Stop that. A grown human being heard a child tell another child he would make him disappear with a ring and somehow took it seriously. I want to meet this person because I have a bridge. <laughs> I totally have a... No, dude, seriously, I got a bridge. I promise. It's a really nice bridge. Got a deal for you. It would, like, every now and then I just look at me, my nieces and nephews, and I think, God, it must suck to be a kid anymore. Like, we have effectively sucked all the fun out of childhood. When I was a kid... We have ruined childhood. There was an abandoned lot down the street from me that they, they were going to be turning into, like, an apartment development complex. And they had, like, those great big concrete O-rings, you know those things? Those tubes they used to make, like, sewer pipes. They had bunches of those stacked up, and there were holes that would fill with water, and you get frogs' eggs in them, and you know, dirt clods. Dirt clods were the best because you throw you throw them and they'd explode, so it'd be like grenades. And you you're when you're when I was nine, you get down there and you just fuck around with all this ridiculous shit. And today, if our kids did that, would be like, oh my god, they're gonna hurt themselves. Oh no, they'll get dirty. Kids don't wait at a bus stop anymore. The bus comes to every individual house. Uh, 
back in my day. Wait out, the snappers. fucking cold. I walked two blocks and waited with ten other kids in the freezing ass cold. Now you wait with your mommy in your heated SUV at the end of the driveway, and the bus comes to every fucking house. But this is this is absolutely crazy. It's a kid. They play make believe. Yeah, that's a thing that happens. Here, okay, kids talk to people who aren't there. That doesn't mean they're schizophrenic. It means they're seven. That's what seven-year-olds do. And yeah, this is a good point. We're currently having a serious debate in this country on whether kids should have to be vaccinated to go to school. Your kid can bring fucking measles to school, but not a fake magic ring. A magic ring, because that's some dangerous shit there. <sighs> we're we're over as a species, I think. Yeah, we're, we're kind of... It's all fucking downhill from we here. We've destroyed our survival instinct. Just wrecked that shit. It's busted. Yeah. Like, whatever, whatever omniscient being spat us out into existence is just like, what the fuck? And they suspended him for this. They suspended him. I read another version of this story where they had previously suspended him for bringing in a child's encyclopedia with a picture of a pregnant woman. Wow. He's got magic and he's teaching them things. He must be a demon. He's a wizard. I don't know, man. That's some scary shit right there. You don't want to fuck with that. But, like, the fucking one ring? Like... <sighs> really? Really? The one ring? Uh... You, think little Jimmy, you think little Jimmy's gonna go all fucking Mordor on the schoolyard? You think he's gonna turn all the ugly kids into orcs? <laughs> that would be kind of awesome, though. Probably, probably not what's going to happen. Would be awesome. So yeah, I guess the first thing we learn tonight is parents, do you understand what make-believe is? Calm the fuck down. Just calm the fuck down. They're going to be okay. Your kids? They're probably going to be okay. Like, you do not need to put them in a padded hamster ball until they're 18. No. They're going to be okay. Actually. Calm the fuck down. Don't they put them in a padded hamster ball in the new Jurassic Park movie and it still don't help? Yeah. Dinosaurs are still going to eat them. You're fucked either way. Fucked a little bit. We've learned once again, the whole drugs still work. Yeah. Anything involving the word hodgepodge should not go into your bloodstream. No. Hodgepodge is a bad word for, for drugs. That's... That's a word old ladies use when they're decorating. Yeah. You could call a casserole a hodgepodge. You just got a hodgepodge of scatter pillows, don't you know? Not drugs! We've learned parents, yeah, maybe your scout leader shouldn't have taken the kids for the naked exhibit, but... But again, calm the fuck down. It's just a dick. It's just not... Boots. It's not the first one they've seen. Probably, if they have a good life, they won't be the last ones they've seen. If you nurse those kids, they you saw your boobs. Yeah. We've learned that for the some... The thing that I don't understand, like, people freak out about women breastfeeding in public, and I'm like, really? That's what they're for. We've learned that Vinci Games is weird. I miss the duck hunt dog. Yeah. We've learned that Gwyneth Paltrow is nuts, and you should not put steam in your vagina. Please don't do that. It's too... Like, they've established that douching is really, really bad for you, okay? Yeah, because there's a bunch of natural bacteria and stuff that are actually part of the human the body. is actually designed to be self-cleaning. Yeah. Douching is really... Imagine how bad this is for you. It's 2015. And we still have to say things like, don't put steam in your vagina. Herbal steam. We have the sum total of human knowledge at our fingertips at any given moment. Like, 
That just seems like massive infection waiting to happen. Don't put like, let's just Let's just fill your vagina with tea. Don't do that. God, don't do that. Don't do that. Why would you, why would you do that? And finally, we've learned tonight, yes, while the world is full of horrible stupidity, sometimes the stars align and a truck full of bees can crash into a truck full of frozen chicken. Nobody can get hurt and just bizarre, just horrible, hilarious shit can ensue. If only Nicolas Cage was there. <laughs> It'll be a perfect day. <laughs> not the bees! Not the bees! No! Oh god, not the bees! Not the chicken! This won't bring back your goddamn honey! <laughs> <laughs>